In the workshop, renovating an old boiler part 7. This is fitting the hand pump and water tank. On screen at the moment are the two options that I have. Either I fit the one on the left, which is the original, after I repair it, or I use one of these. This is a brand new one. These water pumps are excellent. They're available from Blackgates Engineering and I use them most of the time. Unlike a model locomotive tender hand pump, which is designed to be immersed in water, these pumps have union fittings for both the inlet and outlet. I wish the manufacturer would make some larger ones of these because they only have a 3 8 ram. But as this is quite a small boiler, a 3 8 ram will be fine. The original pump was screwed to the baseboard and there are four screw holes in the baseboard itself. As an experiment, I transferred the position of the holes in the pump base onto a piece of scrap brass. And this piece of brass is the same size as the original pump base. But when I position the new pump on the piece of brass, as you can see, it's too close to the holes in the brass. I suppose I could just screw the pump to the baseboard like this, but then the remaining four holes in the baseboard material would look really bad. The baseboard covering is made from a material called Formica, which was very popular a few years ago. And it's not very well stuck to the baseboard, so here is the plan. I'm going to cut a piece of brass and make a proper mounting plinth for the new pump. And here it is. This piece of brass is 3mm thick. The pump's going to sit on this piece of brass, and once it's all screwed down onto the board, it will look OK. Something good arrived in the post the other day. Look at this. It's called Steel Blue Layout Fluid, also known as Engineer's Blue, and best of all, it has a brush inside the bottle. All you do is brush this on the piece of metal you want to mark out. You don't need to put it on very thick. Then you just leave it for a few minutes because it's very quick drying. This was sent to me by a very kind viewer called Norman. Thanks, Norman. It's really good stuff. And it smells very nice as well. And now when I make marks on pieces of metal, I will be able to actually see the lines. I once had a bottle of this stuff many years ago, but it didn't have a brush in it, so I used to have to look for a brush, and eventually I spilt the bottle so it was no more. In this clip, I'm marking the position where the pump is going to be on the piece of brass. But I'm going to drill the holes on these other two marks. And after I drilled the holes, it was time to countersink them. The plate is going to be fastened to the baseboard using two substantial countersunk screws. And this is the approximate position where it's going to fit. The next part of the job was to put the pump in position, then mark the position of the holes on the pump onto the brass mounting plate, and drill four holes, tapping size for 6BA bolts. And by the magic of video, the job's already done. I don't need to labour the point by showing yet more holes being drilled in a piece of brass plate. I'm polishing up this brass plate just to make it look nice for the video. Before I fit this part to the baseboard and subsequently fit the pump to this part, it will be painted black. That way, everything will match the boiler mounting. First of all, though, I need to tap it. This is a 6BA tap. Brass is a very easy material to work and you can tap it without using any lubrication. The only thing that you have to watch when you're tapping a part like this is that you do not drop the entire assembly, including the tap wrench, onto the floor like I once did, which broke off the tap, and it was a steam cylinder which made it worse. After tapping all of the holes 6BA, it's time to fit four 6BA cheese head bolts into the holes, and here they are. The next part of the job is to snip these off with a pair of side cutters and here I'm holding the entire assembly on the belt sander to clean off the ends of the bolts. And now I can put the finished component or almost finished component in position and it looks good. But I do need to paint the brass mounting plate because what it's saying to me at the moment is oh look a brass mounting plate to cover up the original holes in the baseboard. I need to make it look like it's part of the pump. So the paint doesn't get chipped I'll do the painting just before I mount it to the baseboard. It's time to do some work on the old copper water tank. So what I'm going to do first is not unsolder every part of it, but I need to unsolder the pipe that sticks out of the side. It didn't work with the very small blowtorch that I was using. I didn't think it would, but I thought I'd try it just in case. I took it into the outer part of the workshop and used a larger blowtorch to melt the solder. What I'm doing here is using a small needle file to change the position of the hole in the tank. I need to raise it up, and here you can see why. I've soldered a quarter by 40 union in place, so I can pipe the tank properly. And now it's time for the big clean-up. I'm using my Proxon Multi-Tool 
first of all with a flapper wheel to roughen up the tank because I'm going to actually paint this. This is the battery powered version of a Proxon motor tool and I can't recommend these tools highly enough. They really are first class top quality tools. I want to leave a fillet of solder around the base so it looks like the tank's been welded. I've cleaned up the edge of the base itself to just make it look better and I think that once I've given this tank a coat of paint it will look really good. The original mounting of this tank was a bit mad really as the tank was screwed to the baseboard using some steel wood screws and a piece of rubber sheet as a gasket. To clean up the copper around these holes I'm using a diamond burr which is one of a set sent to me by a man called Martin and I'd like to thank Martin for those. Perfect for doing this job. In case you're wondering about this dinted part, why is it like this? It's to allow the tank to be fitted right up close to the boiler casing. You'll see it better when I come to fit the tank to the plant. I've soldered a couple of 6BA bolts into the holes in the bottom of the tank, obviously to plug up the holes and to mount the tank to the baseboard. I'll show you how I do that when I actually fit the tank. To conclude this episode, I'm about to put the tank into my acid bath. So it's into the outer part of the workshop, here's my acid bath and I think I need to top up the strength of the acid because the bones are taking a long time to dissolve. In it goes into the acid bath and I'll leave it there for 24 hours. So that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.